There are four main types of angles that are associated with circles. Um, the first two are we've already talked about, the central angle and the inscribed angle. And then the other two are angles created by chords and angles that are formed outside of the circle. For the central angle, I'm going ahead and list actually all the formulas for all of them. So for the central angle, the angle equals the arc. For the inscribed angle, your angle equals your arc divided by two. Angles created by chords and angles formed outside of circle both end up being associated or intersecting two arcs. So for angles created by chords, my angle equals arc plus arc divided by two. So the two intercepted arcs added together and divided by two. So it's like the average of the arcs. Then the angles formed outside the circle always make two different sizes of arcs. So your angle equals large arc minus small arc divided by two. Since we've talked about the first two, we're going to go straight to number three, angles that are created by chords. So this is an example of an angle that's created by two chords. I've colored in the angle in blue, but really these two angles are also angles created by chords. So it doesn't have to just go side to side, it could also go up and down. Because they create vertical angles, the angle measures are congruent. Okay, so even though the arcs may end up being two different sizes, like these two arcs look really, really similar, but these two arcs are definitely different. You have a small one and a large one. You're not always going to have two different sizes of arcs with chords intersecting like that, but sometimes you do. So this one, the angle measure is equal to the average of the arc measure. So your formula is angle equals arc plus arc divided by two. So what you have to do is look at each problem and determine of these pieces of information, which two do you have and what one are you looking for. So you're going you're to need to plug in the provided information into the correct spot. So in this case, looking at this example, I have an arc, I have an angle, but I'm missing the other arc. So we're looking for an arc. That means in this formula, angle equals arc plus arc divided by two, one of these two values is going to be x. So since we have the angle, we're going to plug in the 40 right over here, plus or equals 50 plus x, those are my two arcs that I have, divided by 2. Then we solve for x by multiplying both sides by 2 to get 80 equals 50 plus x, subtract 50, and that other arc is 30 degrees. In the next example, I'm looking for my angle. So I've got 120 degrees here and 30 degrees there. My angle equals arc plus arc divided by two. The, this time I have both the arcs and I'm just looking for the angle. So this one's a bit easier because all I have to do is plug the information on one side of the equal sign. There's no solving for anything. So 120 plus 30 equals 150 divided by two, 75 degrees. The next type of angle is angles created outside the circle. So you've got an angle out here and it could be created by secants or by tangents or by a combination. What you have with these is that this angle creates two arcs as it intercepts the circle. So one arc always ends up being larger than the other. So the closer arc is the smaller arc and the farther arc is the larger arc. Your formula is going to be large arc minus small arc divided by two. With the chords problems from earlier where the angle is inside the circle, we don't always have two different size arcs. This one always will. So it's a large arc minus a small arc divided by two. So this type of angle can present itself in a lot of different ways. Um, the first example would be two secants that meet outside. This example is a two tangents that meet outside. And the last example is a secant and a tangent. So taking a look at number one, I've got to plug the information into the formula. So the formula is arc, large arc minus small arc divided by two equals angle. Well in the problem I'm given the angle, I'm given the small arc, and I'm looking for the large arc. So I have got angle equals large arc minus small arc divided by two. So multiply both sides by two, I get 60 equals x minus 50, add 50 to both sides, and 110 equals x. For the next problem, for number two, I'm given the angle. I've got something for the small arc, but I don't have anything for the large arc. So this is where I take a look and say, okay, I need to be able to represent the large arc in some way. Since this circle has 360 degrees, and I know my small arc is x, the large arc is 360 degrees minus the x that's taken up in the small arc. So now I have to plug in what I have into the formula. So angle equals large arc minus small arc. Well, my angle is 60 degrees because they gave that to me. My large arc is 360 minus x. My small arc is x divided by 2. 
So when I combine like terms, I end up with 60 equals 360 minus 2x divided by 2. Solve for x, multiply both sides by 2, subtract the 360, and I end up with 120 minus 360 equals negative 240. But over here, I have minus 2, so it's negative 2x. When I divide by that negative 2, x becomes a positive number again, and I get 120 degrees. Last, a tangent and a secant together. Since the secant creates a diameter in the circle, we know that half the circle is 180 degrees. So before I can start plugging things into the formula, I have to figure out what the small arc is. So if I have 180 degrees on this side of the circle and 120 of them right here, this section right here is only going to be 60 degrees because 180 minus 120 equals 60. So my small arc is 60 degrees. Now that we have the two pieces of information, the large arc and the small arc, we can figure out what the angle is using the formula. Angle equals large arc minus small arc divided by 2. So I'm going to plug in 120 for my large arc. I'm going to plug in 60 for my small arc. 60 over 2 is 30. Your angle is just 30 degrees.